Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Europe Universalis 4 with me, Grey Hunter, where we are playing through the saga of the De Harcourt family, where Emma II of the De Harcourts has come to the throne at age 15. We have stuff to do. We do, we do. Our uh, goal for the short term is to chop Gotland to bits and hopefully, you know, make him... Oh, hello. There we go. There's our payoff. So what does this do? Jesuit educated Imperatrix ascends to the throne, leaving Emma, Emma the, I'm just going to call it Emma, Empress Emma's education to the Jesuits has yielded what most would consider the expected results. The new Imperatrix does not lack conviction or bravery, but is fiercely loyal to the Catholic Church and the Jesuits in particular. The faithful rejoice, but heretics now fear the Roman Empire more than ever. Oh, she does get plus one. That, that's cool. I like it. Um... The Roman Empire gets Jesuit ruler until the death of Emma de Harcourt, giving the following effects. Tolerance of the true faith for her, uh, gets increased, and tolerance of heretics decreases. Ad maiorum de gloriam. Uh, de gloriam. Well, God's glory? I honestly don't know. Latin was never really my strong suit at school, I will be completely honest. National institutions, we could say I am the state, but we will not. We will give them what they want because we just came to the throne not a month ago. And I would say that Emma de Harcourt's plan would probably be, you know, to smooth things over just a little bit. Now, yes, fortification is very, very important. While we wait, I want to see what we're up to in Legion numbers. I think 29... Yeah, 29. So we will call this. Uh, I'll get to those notifications in a minute. We'll call this Legio 30. I'll pause it. Uh, Gotland has entered a military coalition. Really? Is it just them? Because if it's just them, I don't care. It's just them. And I lost my thingy. Uh, we're going to call this Legio. Damn it. Legio 30. Scandard. I, I don't know. Scandard Navus. Why not? <laughs> Why not? It fits. Uh, it's probably entirely wrong. That's probably not what Scandinavia is in Latin, if there's even a word for it. And there might not be. We've changed the culture of many provinces. The people will hopefully rejoice. Now, what did that do to the number game? Didn't really do all that much. But it also didn't push anyone down significantly, if at all. So I'm not too cut up about it. I'm pretty pleased. I would like to see if we can't get Castilian and Berber up to the 2% that we require for them to become accepted. That would be kind of nice. I don't know if there's actually any more things we can do to uh, to increase the accepted culture limit, like how low we can get it. I don't know. So we'll have to see where we go from there. Not ungrateful natives. Who'd have thunk it? Meanwhile, we should begin moving troops to the border in preparation. So we're going to move Legio Hodor and Legio Hollandia up to the border. You will go as well. And you can probably sit where you are. You have a lot of artillery. Damn, son. Oh, we'll figure it out. Oh, yeah. Do we have, um, do we have marriages that we can do? Like, do we need to do them? Do we need to renew them? I can't remember. We might. Uh, no. No, we look okay. Can we get one with you? We'll have one. But we have no diplomats to send. I didn't miss a message, I don't think. So we'll send a diplomat to go make nice with Polotsk soon. Um, Norway. Oh. The Timurids have started to become westernized. That could be good. That could be bad as well. It depends. I mean, we'll see if they make it, I guess. <laughs> Right, come on home, Alexander. I need you to go make a royal marriage. Yes. 
Harry Jizz. Who else are we friends with? We are friends with Japan, but we can't have a royal marriage with Japan. We could get one more diplomatic relation. Is there anyone around who's, you know, Catholic that we kind of want to be related with? I don't think so. I think we'll leave that slot open because vassals take up a slot, I'm pretty sure. And if we're going to release Denmark at some point, we should probably be prepared for that. Okay. Oh, hey, Tondo is self-sustaining. Good job, Tondo. Uh, which one of you is worth more? You're both worth the same. You'll get there slightly faster. <laughs> so go here. All right, it's time to get this show on the road. But for that, we need generals. We have no leaders. This is excellent, because that means that we can get a bunch of them straight off the bat. All right, who we got? Constantine Heliogalabus. Ilio Galabus, Alexander Marcus, Titus Nero, and Vespasian Apollonius. Damn, Alexander, you good. You don't have any. You don't have any maneuver, which is kind of annoying. But you're good at fighting things head on. So I'm gonna give you Legio Libatrix. I'm gonna put uh, Constantine in charge of this because he's not the greatest general. He's not entirely crap, but he's not the greatest general that the world has ever seen. Titus Nero can take this army, and I'll give Vespasian Legio Hodor. Now. Now, now, now. The fleet needs to put to sea. Are there any Gotlander fleets around that we need to worry about? Not really, just this particular one, but that's okay. We'll move into that area soon enough. And in three days, when Alexander gets back, he will tell them, We're declaring war. Really? Wait, what? They all call upon coalition mem- Really? Hang on, let, let me just get this straight. He's in the coalition. If one of the coalition members enters a war against the Roman Empire or coalition members- That's not the same coalition. Whatever. Whatever, I'm okay with that. I will I will survive. Yeah, it'll call in Gotland if I attack these guys too. <laughs> well, um, okay. I didn't realize that two separate coalitions could trigger off the exact same war declaration, but apparently they can. Um, I, I can call in Norway. Norway will help me. Really? Does Gotland have any of Norway's cores? No. Well, yes, but I'm, I can't give them that one. Well, that is interesting. Um, well, maybe we can give Norway something. I'll call them in. They're, they're never a bad group to have around. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. All right. Now you, you need to go crush face over there, you need to go crush face over there, and apparently Grodno wants in on this, so you need to move over here to intercept their army if it arrives. I want you to go and hold Arland, I want you, actually no. You're gonna go take Viborg. You will go and take Arland. You will take Halsingaland. And you will take Dallas Gogan. Native Risings, not Native Risings. Curse their sudden yet inevitable betrayal. A third fleet of Gotlanders. I don't think I have to worry about them too much. I think we'll be okay. Where are you marching to? Semigalia on the 26th of February. We're going to arrive on the 21st. We have you now. Yes, we do. They have more artillery. We have more infantry. And we should be able to win based off of our superior military technology. Yeah, we got this. All right. Crushed face. Oh, hey, you got away. Well, that's good, because I'm coming for you. You, meanwhile, you're going to go take Grodno. Grodno joined Gotland in a war. Yes, yes, Norway joined our war against Gotland and Vanard. Speaking of Vanard, we should probably deal with them. Went a little bit too far there. 
really, it's it's literally just you. I mean, okay, if you really want to do this, I guess I can accommodate you, but I don't see why you would want to. I mean, you're bordering my protectorate. I can walk in there. I don't need permission or anything. I can literally just walk over and smack you in the face. I'm gonna do it. I'm, I'm gonna go. Alright, go kill them and then come back over here. Now. Let's see, let's see, let's see. That is a Gotlander army marching in retreat through my land. That's not the greatest thing in the world, but I can live with it. Um, oh, hey, you're taking care of Agda for me. Good job, guys. This might even be easier than I thought. Okay, cross their face. Now let's go and take their land. You guys are actually marching, you're not retreating. Interesting. Not a big deal, not a big deal. We can, uh, we can, we can make that work. You need to march over to Aland, please. I guess you got blocked by a fleet. Well, that's okay. There's no fleet there now, and Norway seems to be doing a pretty good job of blocking stuff. I really wish that I hadn't turned on that pause thing for every invasion, but if I hadn't, it would probably really irritate me not seeing that they were invading something. So, I suppose I can't really complain. We'll deal with them when the time comes. You need to, like, you know, proper assault this place and take it. Pretty please. Alright, good. And apparently our Norwegian allies are going to blockade this for me. I love you guys. Have I mentioned that? You are amazing. You go, Norway. This is why we're friends. This is why I don't want to betray them and, you know, let Gotland have some fun. Because Norway are pretty chill. Oh, you came back. That's interesting. Are you going to try and retake what was yours, I guess? Well, I guess we'll see what you do. I'd be kind of disappointed if you formed this army and then just sat it there in Weistrock. That would be... that would be irritating. Really? I hope you weren't expecting Grodno to come and help you with this one, because that, that's sort of a fool's errand right there. Oh hey, Jedvard is apparently the... is he the ruler or the heir? What's that one symbol? He's the ruler, isn't he? Yeah, he's the, uh, he's the start holder. Well, maybe we'll get him to die in combat. Now, I'm willing to let Grodno off the hook if they want out, so I'm going to offer them peace as soon as I've taken Grodno. Actually, can I offer them peace now? Because if I can offer them peace now just to get them out of the war, I'm okay with that. I don't care. No, they're not interested in it. Fair enough. A fortress is under siege. Well, it's not really. I mean, it kind of is, but it's not really. We won the siege from Mamel. This is good. Let's go take Kurland, and that will force the Gotlander fleet out to face our Baltic fleet. The Siege of Arland is over. Good job, guys. That means you can go and... I don't know, actually. What do I, what do I want you to do? Norway has that under control. You can go take... Go start with the, the boonies, I guess. Go start with the places that don't really worry me all that much as places that they're going to raise armies from. Go go take those. Now, what would be really good would be if you surrendered right at the end of this tick. Pretty please, just so I could get you out of the war, because I really don't want you being in it. Uzbek have accepted peace with Kazakh on the following terms. They basically gave up most of their land and... Re oh, hey. It was a tribal feud, so they basically gave up most of their land, I guess, in return for not being completely completely obliterated. Yeah, that, that's pretty much what happened. Hmm. A gift to the state, you say? Good governance would sometimes prompt the nobility and businessmen of the realm to donate cash to the treasury out of pure patriotism or in exchange for the sales or transfer of honorary titles and positions. 
We can always use more money in the treasury, do that. I like treasuries. Treasuries are good. My war chest groweth. These little armies that you've got piddling around Gotland and guys, that it's not gonna help you. I'm not sure you realize just how screwed you are. The plight of Ostergotland. All of the Roman Empire suffers in war, but the provinces which lie in the path of the enemy suffer worst. What appears to be a what appears to a soldier or commander as a convenient source of supplies is often all that the common people have. They have been plundered. They are now reaching out for the government to aid them in recovering, lest the suffering of the Roman Empire drag on for years past the eventual peace. What do they want? Okay, that's most that's the gift that was just given to the state, plus an extra 400 ducats, but they'll probably be worth it, so I'm going to say whatever's necessary. We need the uh, we need the people to support our war, after all. We are being besieged in the places that we had taken, but that's all right. We can we can work with this. Why have they not sat a fleet outside of Agda? Well, I guess they don't really need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finland is under siege, but we've pretty much broken their army, I would imagine. How's Vinard doing, actually? I, I don't remember if we've finished that siege. No, we haven't. We're almost done with the siege. I think I can piece them out separately. I might not be able to. The siege of Viborg is over. Which is good. Let's go and take Nottiborg. Nottiborg? I don't know. We'll take that, just to stop them from reinforcing along this line. And we'll improve fortifications. We have changed the culture of many provinces. Go team. The Siege of Grodno is over. That should make them surrender to me. Will you surrender? No. <laughs> okay then. If you really don't want to surrender, who has claims on you? Nobody, apparently. No, Poland has a claim on Podolasi. Well, in that case, if you don't want to surrender, I'm going to give them this. I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to do it in the peace deal if I can afford it. You're going to lose land off of this. Are you sure you don't want to re reconsider? I mean, come on. Come on, guys. It's not that big of a deal. You you can surrender. Minus 25. Well, apparently because I haven't destroyed their army in close combat, they're not interested. I can fix that. In fact, I will fix that. Come here. Um, can I move this here? Yes. Okay, do that. You have less ships, also a leader, but not so great on that front. The siege is over. Go back and crush that and then take Lapland. We will deal with all these other things later. Fortress is under siege. Are you not going to win? No, we are going to win. Well, we should. We no longer claim that we have the province claim on Madurai, but that's okay, I don't really want it. Um, Bernard, do you want out? A member of a coalition cannot sign a separate peace. Okay. So I'm stuck with dealing with them, but that's okay. Are you now willing to surrender? No, you're still not willing to surrender. I mean, if you really are going to force me to do this, I guess I can... Okay. Whatever. If you really don't want to have an army to deal with whatever's coming after I beat you, I'm okay with that. You're not one of the people that I'm guaranteeing, so... Let's be honest here. I got nothing. Did that destroy your army? It did destroy your army. Exactly. See? Now you're seeing... Now you're seeing my way. Okay, we have an event. Aristocrats grateful for our favor. A delegation of aristocrats came to us today to thank us for favoring them in government. In fact, they are so grateful that a small voluntary contribution was made to the treasury. 5,600 ducats. That's that's apparently a small contribution. I'm, I'm impressed. So we gave them white peace, because really I did not want to have to deal with fighting them. There was nothing for me there. And we won our siege. You're not going to give this to me, really. Can I ask for it to be? No, I guess not. Uh, Roman peasants have risen up. 
and Venard. I guess I crushed them immediately because I was right there. Anyway, moving right along. Let's see. What is there that we need to be doing? Uh, you are blockaded because your port's on this side. Your port is also on that side. So you can go and blockade the Gulf of Finland in that case. Uh, how are we doing on the whole besieging thing? We're doing pretty good. Vastabotten has been won. Which means you can go... You can go to Karelia. Destroy that army on the way. And go to Karelia. Yes, yes. Sieging, sieging. We will survive. You are also sieging. But that's okay. Honestly, they don't have any armies that worry me right now. There's absolutely nothing that I'm concerned about in this place. I would love it if Norway could take care of stuff over here, though. That would, that would be kind of swell. I mean, if you want to get up off your asses and help out. I'm not saying that you have to, but it would be kind of nice. And they're trying to siege back a place, huh? Well, good luck with that. Have fun. Don't get in trouble. Oh, hello. Russia, 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 what are you doing? Who are you fighting exactly? You're fighting Gotland and Grodno. What are you fighting over? Can I, can I see? Does it tell me in here what the actual war is? Current war. The Russian conquest of Kola. Really? That's interesting. Well, I guess I'm not going to be able to take every bit of territory that these guys have, but, you know, I've got all the bits that I want. I've got, well, I've got most of them. I guess I do kind of want Narva if I can have it. Ah, which one do I want more? Well, Nodeborg's going to fall to me this time around, I guess, so... I suppose I'll wait... I'll march here anyway, just in case that army pursues. No, you're not gonna you're not gonna do it. Well. That's interesting. Hey Palotsk, can I whoa, 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 not the button I want to click. I want to click this one. Can I have military access? Just so I don't have to march around you. Cool. Thanks guys. Yeah, 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 whatever. Actually, this army doesn't have to march around anyway. I'm an idiot. Well, that's interesting. That's really interesting. I kind of wanted Narva so I could sell it to Polotsk if they, if they wanted it. I guess... I guess I could settle for having all of this stuff to sell to them if they want it. And I can always take one or two of these provinces instead. That's not too bad. Um, can I... Can I change the occupation? No? Okay. I guess I'm not allowed to have nice things. Well, we'll sort it out later. It's not a big deal right now. 66% though. Okay, there we go. We're getting some more sieges done. That's really disappointing. I guess it makes sense, because Russia can declare war on Gotland. Gotland's pretty much the only person they could have declared war on and not have me jump on them going, hey, I warned you, stop it. So I guess it makes sense, but that's kind of irritating, because I was really, really hoping to grab a couple of these provinces myself in sieges. Well, that fleet doesn't have to stay there anymore. I'm, I'm not helping them. I don't have any particular desire to help them. This is still the capital. That's really irritating, because I would have liked to grab that. Can I use Russian troops to storm this place? Can I do that? Ordering an assault will be costly. You know, it's on 8. I don't think I have to worry too much. I think I'm just going to wait it out. Let, uh, let the Russians provide me with some artillery, etc. Because it's counting them as being there. Whether or not they actually are, I don't know. But we won the siege, and that's the important thing. Alright, so. You can march home. Here. 
Oh, apparently you don't want to go through... Apparently this isn't quicker anyway. Well, I guess I don't need to have that... Uh, that military access then. Um, you can go conquer this, and then come back over here. You can hang out in Weistruck. You are good where you are. Lijo Hodor, you can come back to Holstein. And I think that's everybody accounted for. I think we're all good. I think everybody has been ordered to their stations. Alright, now we're going to wait a little bit. Do I have any ticking war score on this? You can gain 19 more war score by achieving the war goal. The war goal was... what exactly? Oh, just to control Agda. Okay. Well, I'm going to leave that ticking then for a little bit, because I would like to get to 100% war score if I could. I mean, I'll see what I can grab from them. Just now. Actually, let's do, let's do that. Let us uh, see. No, see, I don't want to do that. I don't want to make it part of Norway. I want to make it part of... Um, I want to make it part of my territory. I guess I'm just not going to get that this time around, but that's okay. We can uh, we can sell other things, so let's grab... Well, let's grab the ones that we want. So, Arland is a definite yes, because we need it. Uh, can I have all of this as well? I can have all of this. Can I have Byborg? I can. Okay. So, basically, anything on top of this is candy. Alright. That's 97. Is there something I can grab that will get me to 100? But not too far over 100. Can I have this? No. <laughs> can I have this? No. Can I have that? Definitely not. Alright. Um, is there something that is worth only 3%? I doubt it. Yeah, no. There's nothing. Can I have this? Yeah. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Alright, let's pause that. Gotland is ceding tons of places to us. How does Norway feel about that? We're not given occupied cores and claims in the peace. Yeah, they're kind of pissed about that. But they're still our friends, and, you know, friends sometimes screw each other over. It's a, it's a fact of life. It is, but somebody's got to teach you that lesson, Norway, and I'm afraid it, it had to be me. So let's put cores on all of the things that we plan on keeping. Plan on keeping you. Um, I think I'll give Osol to the Palotskins. Palotsks? I don't know. Palotskins? Whatever. And I'll give him these three provinces. I'll probably keep Mamel, maybe Kurland. I don't know. Let's see. See how we go. We've lost a trade dispute claim against Palotsk. Well, that's okay. I, I don't really want to follow through on that anyway. Now. Hi guys, would you, no, that's not what I want to do, would you care to have the province of Kovno? You would, and you would pay 80 gold for it. I will totally take that. Yay, Palotsk is growing. And on that note, I think we are going to call this episode to a close, and next time around we will continue with our whole chopping up Gotland and handing out the bits to everybody who could take it deal with our Jesuit Empress Emma II de Harcourt. So until then, thank you for watching and join me next time.